Welcome to iLecture Online. Now here we have our first example. We're going to solve this problem. We're going to find the surface of revolution of this shape. Notice that the edge is defined by the function f of x, which is x squared. And therefore, we can say y equals x squared. We're going to do so by taking a small little dl, a small little segment along the edge of this shape. We call that a small little arc length. And we're going to revolve it around the y-axis. And notice that the distance from here to here is going to change depending upon where we are. It's going to be equal to x, and x, of course, varies depending upon where we're going to be on the surface. And then we find the area by saying 2 pi times the radius, in this case the radius is going to be x, times the square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function quantity squared times dx. So we use the equation f of x equals x squared, y equals x squared, we take the derivative of that, we get 2x, and we take the derivative of the squared, we get 4x squared. So we're going to plug all that in here, and we get therefore that the area is equal to 2 pi times the integral from a to b, no, these are x limits, times x, because x is the radius of that revolution, and times the square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared, which is 4x squared, times dx. Now it turns out that finding the integrals of the surface of revolution is often a lot easier than finding the integrals of the arc length because you end up usually with something outside the square root sign that allows you to find the proper differential. In this case, we're lucky. Notice that the differential of the quantity inside the radical is going to be 8x. We have a 8x times dx. We have an x times dx. That means we need to multiply this by 8. And of course, when we multiply by 8, we also have to divide by 8. And so now we have the proper differential. We have this, the square root of this quantity, and the square root of what's inside is going to be 8x dx, or the differential, I should say, 8x dx. All right, so now that we have that, we can say we have the integral uh, ready to integrate. So this is equal to pi over 4 times the integral. Now, a is, of course, equal to 0. And b, well, let's see here. Hmm. Hmm. What did I choose for b? Should I use 2? I guess it doesn't really matter what I chose. But let me go back to my notes, make sure I use the same uh, limit. Ah, square root of 2. Let's try that. So we're going to let b equal to the square root of 2. Like that. And so we have the quantity 1 plus 4 4x squared to the 1 half power times 8x dx. And so if this quantity here is u, then this quantity right here is your du. And so that's how you're able to integrate that. That gives us a is equal to pi over 4 times the quantity 1 plus 4x squared to the exponent plus 1, which is now 3 halves, divided by the new exponent 3 halves, and evaluated from x equals 0 to x equal to square root of 2. So this is going to be equal to, that gives us 2 thirds times pi over 4 times the quantity 1 plus 4x squared to the 3 halves power evaluated from 0 to the square root of 2. All right, this can be simplified. The 1 and the 4, or the 2 and the 4, they cancel, so we end up with pi over 6. And then what do we get inside here? So that gives us pi over 6 times, when we plug in the upper limit, square root of 2, so the square root of 2 squared, that would be 2, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so we end up with 9 minus, when we plug in the lower limit, we simply get 1. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I made a mistake. Let's do this again. When I plug in the upper limit, square root of 2, I end up with 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, but it's to the 3 halves power. So that means we take the square root of 9, which gives us 3, and then we cube it, which gives us 27. That's the number we need up here. Minus. Now we plug in the lower limit. This becomes 0. 1 to the 3 halves power is still 1. Like this. So that gives us pi over 6 times 26, and I notice 
the 26 divided by 2 is 13, the 6 divided by 2 is 3, so that means that the area, let's just put it up here, the area then becomes equal to 13 over 3 pi. There we go. So that's the surface area that we obtain when we take this curve f of x, which is x squared, and we revolve it around the y-axis, and so it's the surface of the shape that's then equal to 13 over 3 pi. All right, so now we're going to do it the other way by using, instead of using f of x, we're now going to use g of y, and so instead of saying f of x equals x squared, now g of y is equals to squared or y, and also realizing that this distance from here to here, instead of calling it x, we're going to call it the squared or y, and we should get the same answer. So let's try it on our next video.